Alrighty. 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 Hello and welcome to Heroes of Terrador. I'm hey. Kelly, the Dungeon Master, and with me tonight we've got Frank as Pachi, the I don't remember what you are, but you're something. What Perfect. are you? A Farron mm -hmm. something. Ranger? Ranger. Farron Ranger. We have uh Connor as Orbo Whipperwoods, the Forge Druid. <laughs> We've got Andy as Gronson Halfholm, the gory fighter. Hello there. Uh, let's see. So where we last left off, um, we had a, a little bit of a kind of catching up to do with uh, Adhara because he did not, he, he hadn't really talked to anyone much. Um, let's see. Yeah, so you guys, were, uh, I guess, talked to the bar guy and told some stories, got some free housing and uh in the meantime orbo and pachi went to west district met with camp cloudmore and got a um i guess got information on how to get into the court uh so you guys instead of being like the peasants that have to come in later to voice their claims uh you guys get to kind of join in with the mages while they do their kind of first things first kind of business um, as you guys got in, there was, uh, a couple of people already there. Mara was there, so you got to kind of, uh, talk with her briefly. And, uh, I think everyone found a seat, and we were getting ready to have the court session. Is that, does that sound right? Did I miss anything along the way? What were the rules? That's all I need to remember. Let's see, the rules were, uh, don't speak out of turn, so you have to raise your hand. Um... <clears throat> And you have to be called on. Um, I don't remember if I said this, but if if not, then I did say this. Um, and the thing is, uh, whenever a vote is in process, um, they will basically put their hands up. So you'll have a thumb up saying, yes, I agree with this. Or um, you will not have a hand up saying you disagree with the, with the motion. Um, since you guys are honorarily part of this initial group, uh, you will get to kind of have a little bit of say, say or sway into things, um, but they're not going to count you um, as part of the council's, uh, like, high council. So you guys kind of have get to have input, but don't get to really vote as heavily as, like, the main leaders. Oh, and there then were... the last thing that you, I did forget one thing, and that was that you guys found out that one of the high elves, or sorry, not high elves, high mages, um, is a druid that is like very skilled in uh, resurrection and uh, like protection of from cur curses and curing curses and things like that, um, or dispelling curses, which is probably a good thing for Adhara since Adhara has two days before his heart explodes, or you know, mm -hmm. so he thinks. Also, uh, Adhara found out that he is. Um, yeah. Yes, undead. Not undead. Not dead. Not dead yet. I mean, dead, but dead, but not dead. Dead in yes. the past tense. Yeah, dead <laughs> in the past tense. She was alive. He was alive, but now he's not. Yeah. And with that, um, you guys kind of uh, have taken seats and are kind of waiting for the session. Um, as the session begins, uh, the first thing that the queen brings up, she kind of uh, puts her hands up. Everyone kind of quiets down, and all of the paper shuffling and writing that was kind of happening, and uh, kind of, I guess, hallway talk uh, dies down as they, everyone kind of sees that she is uh, about to speak. She uh, looks to address the, uh, the crowd and says, All right, well, first order of business. We need to talk about the Mana Well. Um, it's been four days now, and no one has heard anything from Echo. We really need to probably send uh, three or four more people, uh, probably higher ups from the Simron Guard, um, to check this out. All in favor of sending um, four more, uh, thumbs up. And for the those uh, against the motion, uh, keep your hands down. The 
crowd kind of uh, gets quiet and they all kind of think to each other. Um, this is where Camp reaches out and says, um, so who would go? We know we've got many guardsmen, but uh, which which four should we bring? Uh, and the rest of the crowd kind of, uh, I guess, kind of talks amongst each other. Um, let's see, who is where? So Leia next to Orbo kind of uh, looks over to you and says, uh, have you messed around with mana wells before? Are you familiar with them? Talk without raising our hands. Oh, they, they can't see us back here. Uh, I had a friend drown in a well. <laughs> he lived. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. But that's like a regular well or a mana well? It was pretty magical. Doesn't sound like a mana well, though. I mean, I'm willing to go investigate. Well, but... yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You probably don't want to be a part of this. You see... I'm pretty sure that Echo and the rest of his team, long dead. Four or five days, definitely dead. If not, we'd have heard something from them by now. You definitely don't want to go there. But you see, the reason I was wondering is, uh, apparently there's a few mana wells, and, uh, well, I've never seen anything like this. Usually mana wells are not dangerous. Do you think, uh, do you think someone or something is maybe near the well or in the well? Wait a minute. So you're telling me they sent a group of guys down to a mana well and they're probably all dead and their solution is to just send four more guys down to the mana well to die. That's my problem. That's why I'm voting against this. What? I'm trying, so for the rules, like if we have a question, is it like school where we can raise our hand? Yeah, yeah. You, you can raise, I raise my hand. Um, the queen sees your hand raised and uh, looks kind of a, a little quizzically your way. Um, she looks to Kant and says, uh, Kant, it looks like you, uh, some of your visitors might have a question. Kant looks at you and says, Go ahead, you can speak your mind. Uh, it kind of sort of feels like we're sending four guards to their death. It does, um, but here's the deal. <laughs> the four that we sent were just scouts. They're, uh, well, I don't mean to say just, I'm very worried for their survival and uh, their safety, but they're not uh, the most skilled in, well, dangerous encounters. They're there to scout the area, make sure everything's fine, and walk in. And the fact that they didn't come back is a pretty telling sign that we probably need to send in someone with uh, more strength, more force. And we definitely have a, a squad of people that are able to do that, such a thing. Okay. I'll right. look back to my other two party members and see what faces they're making. I hate all of this. I'm just <laughs> looking at the ground. Okay. After being insulted because I'm a scout. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, Gronson is looking up quizzically and thinking, this is probably not a good idea, but he's listening in to see if he can get any more information. So he's kind of watching yeah. from kind of a reserved stance, leaning against the pile of rubbish in the back. <laughs> um. From the back, Mara raises her hand, and uh, after a second or two, she's called on. I, she looks to the, the council in the front and says, uh, perhaps we set up a bounty. We could perhaps pay some people to report on it, and uh, well, then we don't have to worry about our own guardsmen being injured. And, you know, worst case, it's some, some mercenaries trying to find some coin and they don't make it back, and we know. And best case, we get our scouts back and understand what's going wrong at the Manawa. 
Um, the rest of the council kind of uh, thinks about that for a minute. And uh, the queen herself says, I could wager that. Uh, let's change the... We'll, we'll change it then. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll post a bounty and make the decision from there. Um, all in favor? Thumbs up now. And uh, a majority of the mages in the council uh, put a thumb up. She says, all right, then it's passed. Next order of business. Um, you know what? Your friends here, they've already contributed to answering a few questions. And let's get their questions out of the way. Um, what do they have to propose here? She asking the Cloudmore, or is she asking us? So she she asks Cloudmore, who seems hesitant. He kind of looks at all of you, um, unsure of why you're here. He can't. It seems like he can't. Like he remembers, but he uh, he can't quite put a finger on it. So he uh, he kind of looks at you guys and says, "Yes, uh, please do do." Tell her why you've come here this morning. I, uh, well, I guess if everyone else is sitting in trash, am I speaking for the party right now? Or when are you going to... Well, Pachi doesn't know what to say. But Groundson, you got anything to say? I don't have much to say here. No, I don't feel comfortable in, in uh, formal spaces like this. I'm used to the battle and, and the pits. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I point to Ad Hara and I go, our friend got cursed by a lich. And uh, we stole okay. the eye of Aquafina. And, well, we didn't steal it, but we have it. And he, the lich wants it, and we need to deal with this lich beneath the sapping tree. Um, there's, uh, kind of some snickers from the, uh, from the crowd. Um, and the queen looks and says, I'm sorry, you said the sapping tree, right? Yes. That's a fairy tale. And what, what's your real reason for being here? One second. I turn back to Gronson. Did Kirpin have all the death apples? I think um, I had one of them. Still got it? Um... I do have a glowing fruit in my bag. Um, yes. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm pretty sure yeah. that he does. We got proof. <laughs> so I I, I walk forward slowly yeah, the the and Please. produce a glowing fruit out of my bag. All right. And From that, there like there's a collective gasp, and uh, Alindra here, uh, which is a <laughs> she's kind of a, a scrawny old. Um, Farron. She's got kind of a uh, grayed feathers. She looks very puzzled and uh, walks towards you. Says, uh, can I take a look at that? Absolutely. Just don't oh, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely wouldn't. This is bizarre. She grabs the fruit and looks at it and says, uh, yes. Yes, I see. Well, this uh, this fruit here I guess it backs your claim a little bit. Uh, that this specific fruit in particular is, seems to be a cursed one. One that uh, would surely kill you if you were to eat it. Now, this is not a, a natural fruit. It's something crafted from someone very powerful. A druid of sorts. So, perhaps there's some merit to your story. There's a crazed druid in the woods, and, uh, he's cursed your friend here? And points at, uh, she points at Orbo. Uh, not me. I point to Adhara, that guy. Yep, it's Adhara. And I he see. was a big, scary skeleton of a druid. It's a big, scary skeleton of a druid. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, well, it does. It is possible for people to uh, to perverse the ways of life, and uh, 
or pervert, I guess, the ways of life. And uh, I've I've seen things like this before. I wish I could remember the dildo's name. If only Kurpan was here, I could say, what's the name of that t-shirt, Kurpan? Um, would I remember the, the the name of the t-shirt? Let's get some let's get some history there, because really any of you could remember. We should have. We should have remembered it. Yeah. I remember the name. <laughs> I, can't I mean, say it. Yeah. I remember. I remember the name. It's just I. I don't know if Ronson would have remembered it. I don't. Yeah. I don't remember it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, Gronson, You do remember that his name is is Abizul. Abizul. Yep. Yes. Oh, I Abizul. said it. <laughs> I mean, I I knew it. Just did did Gronson know it. <laughs> Oh, gotcha. I see. Yeah. Um. And of course, if you had asked uh, the people here, they all know there's a like a a. a children's story like uh don't be a bad kid because he'll come out of the woods and eat you kind of thing um, um we we met with this if you're going to call him a druid he was skeletal in nature self-proclaimed abazul and he called himself abazul well here if you're looking for trouble uh you could fight him but some things are best left alone in the distance. Uh, perhaps we can look at your friend and cure him of his ailment, and uh, you can move past this. We would love to. In fact, that's really the only point that we're here for, is to save his life. Oh. <laughs> and we gotta, we gotta save Pachi's kids. And Pachi's kids, but we're... That's what we need the army for, is to also save Pachi's kids. True. So, you're wanting people from Cimarron to accompany you in chasing down this tree so that you can save kids that are stuck in the tree? Yo, one of you guys read minds? Like, is one of you a telepath? Uh... Yes, but it's uh, frowned upon in here. Well, okay, after the meeting, then could you, like, just read my mind? Because my memories will do a better job than my mouth does. Perhaps, but uh, this seems like it doesn't concern the city of Cimarron. Well, if he's stealing people from... He's got, like, a whole cult of baddies out there dragging people through the woods. Yeah, wait a minute. Didn't you guys hire us to investigate the woods? Uh, you hired the woods. us. <laughs> we didn't hire you to investigate the woods, no. How did we start doing this? It was a woman who lived in Cimarron yeah. that hired us to investigate the woods. We should for her daughter. Yeah. To save her from an ailment. Right. Because uh, the daughter and her the husband had both spoken that like the stories were true oh. there was actually a man that would figure out how to survive uh tamsel rot and he lives deep in the woods and so you guys went there to find him and found out that he did but he did it in a very unholy way and um is a lich <laughs> which is technically Technically is true, so the stories were true, just not in a good way. You still have a soul when you're a lich? Uh, and you're phylactery. Yes, but not on you. Yeah. It's in my other parents' pocket. And you also have to consume other people's souls. Yeah. You to... have to feed souls to your phylactery. Exactly. Correct. Which is part of why he's got an army in the woods of soulless things. Yeah, that, that's yeah. still a problem. That does still concern you. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, if we can get Adhara fixed and we can go save Pachi's kids, we'd be good to leave this skeletal man to his business. Or a woman, I guess. I don't know. It could be a lady. So, what would be in it for us? Uh, the Eye of Aquafina. Can't, uh, his eyes kind of light up and he looks at the rest of you and says <laughs> now look now look I've seen it, they have it it's actually the Eye of Aquinas I don't know where they found it or how they found it 
Well, I do know where they found it. They found it in Saltwatch, but I don't know. There's a reason how. why it's raining. But this yeah. would be this would be big. We need this. Um, the rest of the group kind of. Uh, so Lindra walks back to her seat. They all kind of look at each other um, and confide in each other once more. Um, after a minute or two, the queen looks at the rest of you and says, uh, All right. I don't think that we really need to come to a conclusion here. I think we've all unanimously decided in exchange for the eye, which we will, as you know, put away and keep safe um, and protect from the rest of the world. Sure. In exchange for the eye, we will we will send you um, a few guardsmen to accompany you to rescue Pachi or Pachi's family, and we will uh, we will do our best at resolving the curse that Adara currently has. And does that conclude your request? Uh, I think there was a little bit of a discussion of a reward. <laughs> Not to get greedy, but like some low quality magical items or stuff. And maybe we can work something out for your mana well that needs investigating. But <laughs> uh, Kant, Kant looks at, at you and says, uh, but that, that was that was me. Um, and I'll, I'll stick to it. Cool. Then yeah, we're groovy. Well, then, wait, just to be clear, it was Chad Hara's clean, Pachi's kids, Win. and an orb is given to the council. Yeah, they Correct. get the eyeball that I don't want anyway. We yeah. don't want it anyway. We'd like to leave here and not have to have rain on our backs. Yeah, if possible, could you like blow it up? <laughs> blow up the eye. Yeah. Are you actually asking them? Uh, yeah, I'm actually like instead of storing it, is there any chance that you can just like break it? Uh, Kent immediately <laughs> like looks at you and says, "No, no, 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 no need, no need to do that. We don't need to explode it. Uh, it's we can put it away so that it doesn't cause this awful torrent outside, and uh, it will be safe and away from everyone else, and we can study it and figure out how it works and why it works." Oh, it's related what? to the Titan that it came from. So. Yeah, wait. I do have a question, a real question. So is this actually the Titan's eyeball? Um, is, that- are, 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 is, is Orbo asking them? Yeah. Yeah, Kath looks at it and says, yes. What did you think it was? I don't know. I thought it might be like a relic and they just named it that. No, this is, this is a real artifact of a time long, long ago. But it's actually his eye. Or That's, her eye. As so Aquafina and Blair are Aquinas, uh, it's, it's androgynous. It's, a, it's right, just a being. <laughs> yeah. This is actually eye. their eye. Yeah. This okay. is actually the eye of Aquinas. Yeah. Which is why it's like, so important. It's so really cursed. Incarnate. The Titan through their eye. Isn't there a red spell? You, you can keep going. I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. Oh no, it has to be a humanoid. Never mind. Darn. Yeah, uh, okay. I I knew exactly where you were going with that because uh, I also went that way. Because uh, I was thinking, yeah, there's, I was like, there's some red spell where you can do it as long as you've got like one piece of them. Yeah, true resurrection. Oh no, reincarnate. You can also oh, reincarnate. Do it. There's yeah, also Revivify or Revivify, however you say it. Uh, Revivify, Revivify, you have to have a body. Because I don't uh, think Revivify right. fixes anything. Yeah. Just makes you not dead. Yeah. There's a it, lot of yeah. like, you're dead? No, you're not. Kind of spells. Is out there, there a way to remove undeath? Well, technically, if we let Adhar die, I, well, no, that's the issue. She's been. Dead. She already Won't did. Die. Die. Already yeah. dead. No, I can't revive a fire. She gets killed now. Right. And uh, no one's really like scried what what the curse was. Um, 
so no one really knows why or how it works yet. Um, which is fine, but is it? <laughs> it is custom because I, I I couldn't just have a default spell built in because it, it everyone would just look at it and be like, oh yeah, okay, it's that spell. Oh, I can just fix it with this. Had had no, to again. had to you know turn a few knobs, twist a few things, pull some levers. Yeah, but it's curable, and we'll figure that out next part perhaps. Um, so, uh, the queen looks at you and says, you know, yeah, uh, once more, is that, does this, uh, does this trade seem fair to you? Yeah. I nod as well and sit back down next to Adhara. All right. Well, then we will continue on with our next motion. Um... You guys uh, can kind of stay around if you'd like, or you can wait until after. Um, I'll let you guys kind of decide if you want to listen in on the rest of the stuff, or if you want to kind of zone out and then uh, just hang out after after the uh, after court session is done. I mean, I stay, but I I'll, I'll stay, listen. <laughs> I'll stay and listen. Oh, this is for I'll trigger words like tree and tall. Good. We'll do some. We'll do some. Uh, just just some like uh, general perception, and it's it's sound, not sight. Just see how well you guys are paying attention to things. All right, Look, I'm the wrong game by perception. Perception. All right. What is that? One D zero. <laughs> he you. chooses not to listen. <laughs> Oh, what's else performance? <laughs> uh, she says, no, get me out of here. Now. Give it a second. It's trying. I suffered through enough of these. Roll. There you go. Wow. Um, Tooting their own horns. That's a good perception. Yeah, so Orbo is kind of listening in here and there as, as they talk in. Uh, you catch that uh, they speak of the cave-in that happened um, about a week ago. Uh, it's actually been a little bit more than a week at this point, and uh, they're getting bothered by the lack of uh, transit between um, Cinder Hall and Cimarron. And so they basically decide to send a, a, an investigative party to figure out why things aren't getting better, and they also plan on sending a construction crew out to help fix the... Uh, fix any of the problems with the rubble uh, after the uh, granite pass caved in. Um, let's see, what else did they talk about? Um, That's my bad. Alindra complains um, that oh, she keeps Come. hearing that people are um, traveling to this uh, new location uh, that kind of recently popped up out of nowhere. Um and it's uh, about a day and a half to walk north of Kaviskar. Um, these very large, immense, glistering yellow orbs had uh, mm. have de kind of descended from the sky, and uh, farmers from around that area have started to gather, and some people are amazed and, like, full of awe and wonder. Um, others are very paranoid that it is something terrible. Um, so the problem is people that go into these orbs, uh, cause they have little openings that are at the bottom. Um, the people who enter don't seem to come out and every, every day since they've, uh, arrived and landed on the ground, uh, small tremors have begun to plague the countryside. So... Uh, essentially, Alindra is looking to send an expeditionary party out to take a look at that. Um, but the rest of the party, uh, or the rest of the mages, uh, kind of vote against it and say, that's a little bit outside of our jurisdiction. Let's let the people of Capiscar deal with it. Uh, we'll see, what else was there? Those are the two main ones. Um... The rest seem to be of kind of paperworks. Um, 
issues with the uh, like local locals in uh, Drywell. Uh, a, a few people are complaining that uh, the bluefin, ugh, the you know what the tuna fish bandits, um, <laughs> I'll just call it that, have been fighting uh, or have been getting like dangerously close to Drywell and uh, seem to be getting bolder and bolder. I'd, uh, I guess I could raise my hand to that. Sure, yeah. Uh, I informed them we have a map of where their base is. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so Silvero uh, kind of looks at you and says, uh, do you mind sharing it with the with the council? Uh, I'm fine with it. Uh, he, he walks yeah. to you. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if I'm coming to him or he's coming to me. Well, we, you guys can kind of meet at the bottom. Uh, he takes you a sure look. Sure, Silver Bell. Silver Bell. Mm, that doesn't sound right. But he can be Silver Bell if you want. Yeah, Sorbo. Uh, <laughs> Sorbo. <laughs> Silver Bell. Yeah, um, yeah he, he takes a look at your, um, your map, and after a second or two, uh, kind of out of thin air, seemingly out of thin air, uh, generates a second one, a copy of that same map. Um, he hands you the original back, says, thank you, this will help us hone in on where these where these bandits are and hopefully put an end to them once and for all. Cool. If you want to help with that, let us know, because we hate the tuna fish bandits. Well, perhaps we will, uh, after your situations are handled, you can, uh, we can maybe pay you a certain amount to join in on the expedition to, uh, put a stop to them. Cool. Um, the rest of the day, like I was saying before, um, they don't really, um, talk a whole lot about things that are interesting. Uh, I guess one one last thing is they do bring up the um, the Manuel near the uh, ast near Astroloft. And they um, kind of uh, continue to say that they're sending more troops in and that they're going to get that disp uh, dispute handled, even if it takes a little bit of force. Um, outside of that, they don't really bring up much more that would be interesting or relevant to you guys. Okay. All That's right. still a lot of things that we've <laughs> already had a little bit of time uh, discussing or have uncovered before. Yeah. All those are still plot points. Yeah, the things things are happening. Some Some good, some bad. Mostly bad. But, you know, that's why they're in court. Talking about decisions and things that they're going to do. All right, yeah, so uh, as the court kind of uh, continues for the next hour, uh, people begin to walk in. Uh, they uh, basically come in the same way that you could do, and they voice their concerns. Uh, the, the council kind of says yes or no to the decisions, and uh, the, they leave. Um, nice. It's about... Uh, about lunchtime, and uh, court session is wrapping up for the day. Um, as as everything is kind of closing in uh, or closing out, uh, it, the the meeting is adjourned, and everyone begins to to leave. Um, as everyone's leaving, Alindra and Camp stay because um, obviously they were planning to uh, talk with you afterwards. Uh, the rest, uh, unless you want to speak with them, are going to head out. No, I'm good. Let's see. I wish there was a way to, like, move multiple tokens at once onto another layer. Is there? Anyone know? Trying to move a bunch of tokens at once into a layer? Yeah. Just highlight them all with the big click. I think I got them all in the layer. All right. 
So now that oh I'm need to take this player. That's why. One sec. Uh, so as as that's I guess as the court session is completed, um, Camp motions to you all and says, uh, "Back here, we can uh, do some studying and figure out what's wrong with Edhara and uh, kind of set things uh, set things in motion." Does Ooh. everyone want to come along, or would Wait. you rather head out and just uh, Edhara and I talk? I mean, I'm going. Yeah, unless uh, unless that one wizard needs to read my brain to know that what I was talking about was real. I'll accompany. No, I, I I would take take it that they believe you. They're just a little um, not wary. It's just a little strange to them. Like this is a uh, this is bizarre to them because it's like, oh, this is a fairy tale. This seems unreal but real at the same time. You know oh. how if you were, someone was like, "Oh yeah, Humpty Dumpty's totally real," and I see him, and here is actually like part of his shell, you would also be like, "Uh, what? That doesn't make sense." But I mean, you've got evidence here, so I guess, I guess I have to sort of believe it. It's like that kind of thing. Oh, what I meant was the only reason I want to show my memories is so that they could see like what I saw and might have a better understanding of what it is than I did. Well, uh, you saw the, the lich, that, right? right. Well, the, the, you know, I might say it's a lich, and then they go, "That wasn't a lich. That was a, you know, a zombie skeleton or something." And they can go, "That's what it is." Yeah, isn't there? Hold on, let me Dandy Beyond save me. Um, isn't there like yeah. a like de like detect thoughts or something like that? Detect memories. There's definitely ways to read people's. I just didn't know if any of them were telepathic. If only Jill was here, because she would know, like, immediately, probably. Uh, detect thoughts. Here we go. Well, detect thought just lets you know if there's, like... Yeah, I guess if you let someone go deeper in, you can, like, learn what they're thinking. Hmm, there's modify memory. Let's see. Well, wouldn't detect thoughts usually just be a detect motivation, detect inner monologue? wouldn't necessarily be a visual representation of their memories. Yeah, that's true. What we want is like a pensive, right? Yeah. Where they can go and see our memories. Maybe that only exists in Harry Potter. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I see detect thoughts. That's really the only thing I see. So yeah, you can read the thoughts of certain creatures when you cast a spell as long. It's your action on each turn until the spell ends. You can focus your mind on any creature that you can see within 30 feet of you. You initially learn the surface thoughts of the creature. What is most on its mind at the moment? As an action, you can either shift your attention to another creature's thoughts or attempt to probe deeper into the same creature's mind. If you probe deeper, the target must make a wisdom saving throw. If it fails, you gain insight into its reasoning, its emotional state, and something that looms large in its mind. I mean I guess the way they would do it is they would cast a tech thoughts on you, and if you let them read your thoughts, then they could ask you, what did you see? And then you remember, and then you remember it. what you saw. Yeah, that works. Let's see. So I guess if, if they're willing to interrogate me, I will offer my brain up. Yeah. Um, Kat looks and says, uh, we, can get, we can get Trent to do some of that. Um, perhaps look look deeper into your history and get some more information. Or into your brain, if if you are if you are okay with that, I am willing. Well, then let's let's go to the back here. Government. Government. Rat for I'm government. Sad. Oh, there's <laughs> more map. <laughs> yeah, there's more map in the top corner. <laughs> Le follow me. And then let's get uh, Edhara up there too. Well, then I'll follow as well. And Harry gets to stand in the middle. He's a special boy. He's a very special <laughs> but boy. She's just like, nope, see you later, nerds. See that thing you do in the moon. She's line. already left. She's just waiting outside. Oh, okay. She's, she's, waiting for some... she's ready to go save her kids, and I agree with her. 
We gotta yeah. get on that. All I've right. heard enough of these wizards. Well then, uh, let's let's keep it quick then. Uh, Trent is able to read through. Uh, I mean, it sounds like you're going to uh, intentionally fail all of your saves, anyways, as Orbo, so that they can just, read your mind. Um, I think you can just choose not to make a save. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like you auto fail yeah. in quotes. Um, like, so if there's a fireball, you can just like be like, I don't move like burning at yeah. all. <laughs> I'm not scared of you. Um, yeah, okay, so Trent uh, kind of reads into your mind think, and looks into uh, what, you're, what you're thinking. Uh, what, what are you thinking? Right now? Right now. So I'm thinking we, you, have to do better... your, you have to do your surface thoughts first, but then we'll go deeper to, to memories. The surface right now, I'd probably be thinking, I need to go find that wife and her daughter and give her more money for the root so that her daughter doesn't die. Okay. Yeah, so Chen, Chen looks and says, uh, who is... Uh, you're, you're married. No. <laughs> I just say no, and then I think back to when we, we killed her husband. <laughs> yeah, he, he seems confused and says, uh, oh, I see. These well, are his clothes. I pull in my duds. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, you saw the memory he was asking <laughs> for. Oh, let's go deeper. <laughs> So yeah, what what would your deeper thought that you're trying to uh, kind of portray to them be here? I mean, I guess I'm just trying to remember everything we saw in the tree. So I'm remembering like the dudes in the woods motioning us, finding the tree, going downstairs. Oh yeah, I also saw like the fucked up experiments they were doing too. Yes. I didn't even bring that up. Yeah, I think about that. I think about okay. the guy we killed who was like an infinite respawning ghost. Uh, yeah, uh, you think, think about the mummy? Trent kind of, uh, like... Oh, I forgot. Yeah, there was a mummy, too. That was spooky. She she lets out, a, a, like, an exasperated gasp. And, uh, goes, whoa. Okay. So it's real. He's real. And I'm... something weird is going on down there. Something really weird. What were those things in the cages? Uh... I think at one point they were people. They were. They were doing experiments on them. I have a whole list of experiments they were doing right here. You wait. You have you have them written down. It was a list that I found in the tree. Did they write that? Well, what what does the list say? Let's see, do I have it written down? It was just a disturbing checklist. Um, <laughs> it just says disturbing uh, checklist. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> It um, was it was a, it was a list of various experiments they were running on all of their their uh, captives, and they were trying to create something, some so cra crazy power or soul. I mean, the arcane is a mystery to me. So, <laughs> well, uh, I'll, I'll look at I'll take a look at this list, and um, she she takes a look at it. Um, in the meantime. Elindra walks to uh, Adhar, says, here, th give me one second. Um, take this cell, and um, it shouldn't hurt or anything, but it should give me a little bit of insight on what kind of undeath you have. Um, since Jill is not here, Adhar is going to use the cell, um, which is enough to let Alindra kind of understand that basically what the Lich has given Adhara is the opposite of gentle repose. Um, it's kind of a forbidden spell that people don't really know much about, um, but she coins the term herself. If this is not gentle repose, perhaps this is a ghastly one. Um, after 10 days, it seems that, uh, well, it seems on touch that you've become undead, and after 10 days, well, the unpart stops. So here, you stay with me for a little while, and I will try to resurrect you. It's going to take an hour or two. I know you're not dead, but it should cure the undeath side of things. It's going, but it will take me some time, 
and it'll probably be an hour or two. In the meantime, perhaps the rest can uh, prepare and get ready. Um, so I guess while you guys kind of uh, reconvene outside, we'll let Adhara be cured to an extent, or at least as much as Elendra is able to. Yeah. Not a question of uh, time. I mean, we have enough time to do a couple hours worth of work. It's whether it's uh, efficient. What well, can it be done? Can the spell be done, or yeah? Well, can it make an effect? We'll yes. see. Yes. Yes. Uh, I mean, she's extremely like a a very old grizzled druid. Um, so she would know something like true resurrection to to bring something from the brink of death or complete death up to 200 years and bring that you know breathe new life into that creature um or perhaps there's something else she could do um so open heart surgery yeah basically open heart surgery (laughs) we'll just take your old heart out and put a new one in um trin uh in the meantime has been reading through this uh this checklist says uh hmm so they're turning people into some kind of mutated being. Why would a lich want to bring something back to life? A lich already knows how to bring something back to life. This must be different. Maybe, maybe bring himself back to life so he's not a bag of bones. That's a possibility, he, but... He didn't seems... look weak to me, though. No matter how skeletal he was he he was very strong well i mean that's the powers of a lich liches are well they're on the levels of our high council here they're not they wouldn't be a a low tier mage they they know things that are unspeakable yeah but in addition this is not just any lich this is a lich that that is (laughs) is basically a fairy tale well when we say a lich i've never seen more than one so as far as i know this is what liches are and the only lich but perhaps there's more i just as far as i know all of my history books it's always been told i've always been told that uh it's something that could possibly happen but no one's done it before Except for him. Well, then this is the lich. (laughs) Well, uh, is there anything else that we can help you with? Um, And Kanth kind of looks at you guys and says, uh, and perhaps I could hold the eye in the meantime and, uh, you know, make sure that you don't have to stay in the pouring rain all the time. Maybe we could help you uh, secure it and make sure that it gets to a safe place. Absolutely. Uh, we should take it to my house. I have all the tools for that. We gotta save Bachi's kids. Well, we, we're, we'll do that next. It would be a shame to have to travel all the way out into the woods with a torrential downpour. I'm surprised that you've made it all the way from Saltwatch with that rain. I have an idea. This will work perfectly. Because Shadhar is staying here, right? Uh, just for a little bit, yeah. Yeah, for a few well, hours. I'll give Shadhar the eye, and then when he's well and good, he'll give you the eye. Camp sighs and says, I thought you would say that. Something like that. That we're half and half, you know? That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> we'll, we'll stay here, and... Uh, I will... Uh, he'll stay here. I will go find you um, some people to to help. Well, I'll go find some fellow guardsmen, and uh, you guys can... Well, you can meet us at Drywell, since that's right outside, and we'll go from there. Perfect. Uh, I reach into my blouse, and I, I fetch out the eye. 
I shove it into Chad Hart's chest, like the opposite of the scene in Indiana Jones too. I just like keep shoving it inside of him. <laughs> All right, Edhara now has pocket. the eye. The eye yep. just constantly gets tossed around. I love it. Yeah, this this Titan artifact that uh, is. You put that in a hurry. Yeah, dangerous. Yeah, I'm deleting it from mine. Just because it gets it's absorbed yeah, into each I other. It's a football, right? It's yeah. big. Yeah. It's pretty big. I was I mean, just thinking about maybe ripping my eye out and putting that thing in there. It's too big. Something. No, it's like it's like you know a gourd or like yeah. a, like a, a bigger than a football kind of thing. Yeah, it's a like large ball. Large in my head, and then I could put it in. And this is after it's been shrunk, by the way. Yeah, um, this is a shrunken eye, not the large size eye. It was, was originally like the size of a person, or or larger, but spherical and lots of noodly appendages. Noodly appendages, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh, <right>. great one! <laughs> then um, let's get everyone. I guess we'll we'll send everyone to Drywell. Is Pachi, I know you haven't said it or done anything here. Uh, are you? Pachi was outside. Oh, yeah, that's Pachi. right. Pachi is hanging out outside. Um, in the I guess, rain. Would you have? What would you have been doing in this time here? I'll just be waiting by the door for them to come out. All right. All right. Well, then we'll let uh, everyone come out except for Adhara, who will catch up later. Um, cool. And hopefully not be cursed. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. And not be undead. <laughs> that would be pretty nice, right? Loki, I didn't think it was a good idea to bring the, uh, the eye no. to the tree. Are we out of earshot of Kant yet? Uh, yeah, he's so Kant will would have uh, kind of left before you. Um, cause mm -hmm. he's go, he has to go find the rest of the knights that he's going to, uh, bring along. So he's, he's checking out where the guardsmen are. Um, I guess, yeah. uh, Pachi, you would, you would see Kanth head out, um, towards the barracks. Um, so if you want to say anything to him, he would be there. He's getting people for our... Little raid. Yeah, I'm gonna say some fucking kids. Yeah, I think I think Camp is. He's he's doing right at this point. He's gonna do right by us, but I don't really trust him. <laughs> he seems like he's got some sort of ulterior motive with all of these powerful relics. First the uh, the codex, now the eye. That is true. He does have a a list of. Forbidden books and items, um, as you guys found that that's why Mara was looking for that. Um, yeah, it was part of a collection books. kind of thing. Yeah, it was all for camp. He's also been fairly open with you guys about that, though. He has told True. you all that like he is kind of the collector of rare and dangerous artifacts. I mean, we so. can maybe we can talk with him about that. How about you do some research and then we blow it up. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to really help if he, he's got 20 or 30 other deadly high level magic items. No, well, we got two hands. I can't use more than two at once. Getting him angry and and blowing up or destroying one ancient artifact doesn't necessarily make Simran a safer place. It might make it much worse. Well, I'm going to play it by ear. We blow it up. I'm saying we ask once you're done researching, can we break it? All I'm worried about right now is saving Pachi's kids. That's true. That's I true. I made a promise we we're going to save these damn kids. We, we got to first save the kids. One, Think of the kids. One thing to keep in mind is that the, uh, the knights that you stole or took, you didn't steal, uh, took the eye from um, the knights of Edenmore. They uh, they think that they have the eye, but it's been a few days. Um, I think I don't have the eye anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that works. <laughs> that counts. Um, but yeah, they 
naturally speaking, an artifact of that level and with their seedy interests, I, I think in the back of your mind, you would be thinking that they might have something up their sleeve. I mean, I was more suspicious of those knights than I am of camp. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're more suspicious or less suspicious? More suspicious of, of the knights than the camp. I'm suspicious of camp, but they were downright scary the way that they had a lack of interest for that poor fisherman's life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no one really likes that, and uh, I think that was probably a good thing. Um, Anth hasn't done anything that atrocious yet. Yet. We'll see that. That's exactly. The word yet is a very important one here. <laughs> Alright, well, if everything, or if everyone is uh, heading out, I'll steal Gronson and put him down here. Yeah, just moving on out. And we'll send the three of you to Drywell. Ooh. Cool. They're going to be mad when they see we also hired knights from the other place. They might. Yeah, that's going to be, but we'll leave that for next time. That'll On be some contention we're going to have to of Dragon use Ball some Z. diplomacy. Yeah. Use some diplomacy during that. That's going <laughs> to... Look, we're getting backfire. soldiers, so we'll just be like, look, you guys are like men, you're not like the fancy pants of wizards, you're above this. Bro. Or Bro. women, whatever. You guys are cool people. <laughs> just gotta convince let's them be, that. Let's be practical here, we need man manpower, we need soldiers. Let's see, Grant, so uh, Apache, and... Where they come from. I actually wanted a wizard army, if I'm gonna be honest with you, but... A wizard army? Yeah. That would have been a better uh, match for a, a lich. But... I mean, I'm assuming if they're soldiers in a magical place, they'll at least have a magical idea. Or magical items, maybe. Well, also, yeah. I think now that they know about whatever we saw, they might send us something a little bit better than, like, the third shift of the guards. Yeah. True. Uh, I mean, Camp favors you guys. He, like, thinks that you guys are pretty cool especially since you did help his like apprentice get onto the council so when it comes to like likability he's not gonna like skimp out for you guys um because he he has a history and knows that you guys are like following through on things we did um, we did follow through dead or alive yeah dead or alive <laughs> <laughs> forgot about that <laughs> But yeah, so he, he's going to find, uh, and I guess at the same time, he also knows that Pachi knows <laughs> other guardsmen. And so she wouldn't necessarily be cool with, yeah, exactly. She's got, she's, she's been part of the Simran guard. So if he, if he was to send like a bunch of super lame, I don't know, people that have never fought before. One, like Pachi would know, you guys would know, and he wouldn't get what he wants, which is the eye, so um, it would be kind of lame for him. Nice. Um, yeah, so the next round, it sounds like uh, we'll be um, making sure that the knights and the guardsmen are friends and like each other, and uh, going on a witch hunt. Or basically lich hunt or, or lich hunt yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh so I, I guess is there any last thing that you guys want to bring up or kind of have any questions or something uh before we call it quits here i think that's it for me okay mm -hmm. all right cool and finally dungeon delving on the next week Pachi will get to do something yeah how she will like go take a swing at someone and then instantly die. I'll be lucky if I get a swing. Oh, we'll we'll save the kids. <laughs> save those kids. You know, uh, honestly, going through um, court, I feel like that has to be some XP uh, because <laughs> you had to deal with those crazy tea drinkers. So disgusting bureaucrats yeah and, Entirely. and we had to produce items to prove our innocence that's true so let's let's <laughs> let's go with uh 
Let's let's drop 200 XP on that. Nice. It's more than a rat. More than a rat. There's a whole bunch of rats. Burek rats. Burek. <laughs> Got him. Good joke. Good joke. 200 XP. There you are. All right. Lovely. Well, I think that's going to be it. So thanks everyone for tuning in and hanging out. Um, as always, here's our here's our shout outs. Uh, so our, the tabletop that we're using is Roll20.net. It did pretty well this time, which was pretty cool. Uh, music and ambience, ambience, ambiance, whatever. Ambience. Beyonce. Um, it's all by Tabletop Audio and Incompetech. Um, all of the battle maps and world map assets are built with uh, some of the two-minute tabletop assets and uh, are built through Dungeon Draft. So check those both of them out. Um, our items, armor, and emblems for factions and cults and other game icons are from GameIcons.net. And then the rest of the miscellaneous artwork um, can be found in the description. Uh, you can keep in touch with us by joining our Discord. There's a link in the description there for the, our Discord link. Uh, we stream every Monday at 7 Eastern Time. That's not true. It's like some, usually every Monday at 7 uh, Eastern Time. Uh, and with that, we'll see you next week. Bye.